So today is going to be the last session in uh, our autumn series that we called A Learning Journey. And today we want to do a summary, really, of, of everything we're thinking. The Learning Journey was about preparing for 2021, so we want to summarise everything now. I know some people are very... Um, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're all about efficiency, you're just thinking, well, why did we even need the last 10 weeks? Why couldn't we have just had the summary? But actually, the 10 weeks, as much as anything, is a process of, of, of us, Sarah and I, and the whole church learning as we go along. And this is something we've found God has done for us in the past, isn't it? Yeah, going back to when we first were asked to lead the church about 16 years ago. 16 years this month, yeah. And um, we were waiting then for God to just skywrite it for us and, and give us a really clear indication and maybe some a nice dream or something like that, a vision. Um, and it wasn't until we stepped out in faith and kind of made movements towards um, taking on the role that we then had, we didn't have any dreams or visions that I remember, but we then had confirmation from God that it was the right move. So that's very much how God has worked with us. Yeah, and I mean, some people get really clear kind of like, you know, announcements from God about stuff. But actually, our understanding of or learning how God speaks to us is actually really biblical. And right at the start of us leading Exeter Vineyard, we looked at this Exodus story and it's really interesting there. Moses wants God to give him a sign as he's at the burning bush, as he's being sent back into Egypt. He wants us to give me a sign that this is you. And God says, this is, this is the sign. Once you have done it, then you will worship me here on this mountain. And we've found very often that we take that step of faith and then God confirms to us as we do it, which is not the way around we would like. But not so easy. certainly I think this last 10 weeks as we've been going through it, we've kind of understood some of the dynamics, we've found language around it, we've managed to think through various uh, aspects of it. And to me, it's always like finding jigsaw pieces that fit together to build the picture of the vision where we're going. So we want to summarise these plans for next year and we're going to do it in four parts. Yeah, so nothing set in stone, but at the moment we're going to look today, we're going to just look at um, four things. Today we're going to look at, um, what was the first one? <laughs> Emphasis. <laughs> Emphasis, structure, rhythm, and I've got this. <laughs> just <laughs> Involvement. It's written here, but <laughs> anyway, yeah. So um, we, know that we know as we're talking about change because there's a, a mindset in our our head of what church is, you know, because it's very set from, from most of us in our whole lifetime, church has been exactly the same. So we're, we're talking about adapting, we're talking about taking a step and, and uh, trying new things. People have different attitudes to change. I quite like change. You are? No, adverse, very adverse. So just if you are finding this a little bit stressful, we thought to help because we do care about all type personality types. You know, we do want to be, uh, you know, generous and... Uh, what's the word? I'm Compassionate, looking for? Compassionate and, understanding. and understanding. So if you're feeling a little bit stressed about this, here is a picture of a cute puppy just to look at and feel calmer. <laughs> and that little puppy wants to say to you, it's going to be okay. Everything's all right. It's okay. Okay, so we're going to start first with, uh, as we move to 2021, our emphasis. So we want to shift our emphasis onto how to make disciples rather than just running events. Yeah, so we, you know, with church is so well established over the last few hundred years that often we find ourselves uh, starting with our programs, activities, structure and organisation and then trying to fulfil the purpose God's calling us to from within that framework. This time of uh, having to step back from everything because of the pandemic, we felt it's just a really good opportunity to instead start with what we want to do which is create disciples or create environments to make disciples and then think what activities programs structures and organizations are best suited for that for making disciples yeah and if we think about discipleship aside from it sounding kind of like a churchy word uh, as just being more like jesus yeah and so that process of becoming more like jesus i think in charismatic circles, we often are waiting for a zap, something to zap us, the Holy Spirit just to zap us and make it happen. And then if that isn't happening, then we just have this vague hope that somehow we are becoming more like Jesus, which I do think happens. But what we want to think about is like, how do we intentionally 
enter into a process with God to become more like Jesus? How, how do we make that our emphasis rather than just hoping it might happen as we do our other stuff? And the church talks about um, us being the body of Christ, so doing the things that Jesus did. And in Ephesians 4 it says, the church's responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So if, that, if the church is to equip God's people to do his works, that will help us. That's what we want to do. We want to be a church that helps everybody uh, fulfill the calling God has for them to be like Jesus. And, um, you know, you think about if we're going to be like Jesus, Jesus was bringing God's kingdom into the mess and chaos of the, of the earth. And in fact, Jesus did that because that is what it is to be human. You can go right back to creation, the Garden of Eden, and God tells people, go out and bring order and beauty into the mess and the chaos. We just need to look around us and we see mess and chaos. So we want to help people become, you know, help you and I, all of us, become people that can are equipped to go out into the world and start to bring God into, into circumstances, situations around us. And so this is our emphasis. This is why discipleship is important. Mm. And we've been looking at the circle with the five areas and, and we're just talking about it. I mean, there's so many ways to understand discipleship, but for us, it just gave us a common language and a tool to look at our security. Are we secure in the ways that Jesus was secure? Yeah, so we see Jesus secure in all areas of his life. So this is a framework for us to talk about growth, I guess, you know, like to, to know what we're looking at in our lives. So we know that discipleship happens best in community you know in the bible it's always happened jesus gathered a community around him jesus just hung out with people community is really important for discipleship so if we're going to emphasize discipleship we have to do community and the other aspect of discipleship is it requires intention it, it doesn't just happen by default and so we've likened this one of the moves I think that we're going to find is we're asking people to step out of a passive space into an active space. Sometimes the way church is organised is passive. You know, we just come, we, we receive and then we can go, uh, you know, just really simply. And, and there's all kind of gradations within that. But we think that as we're moving into 2021, we're, we're calling people to be slightly more active in their own spiritual growth. And the, the, the analogy I keep using that I think is really helpful was when, we, when I was at school, I can remember going to lectures and I would think, well, all I need to do is write down notes from what the, the tutor's going to say. So I just have to have 25% of my brain going and just write down notes. And I'm kind of ready for that. That's what I'm feeling that I've, I've got in me. And then when I arrive, the tutor says, don't get your books out. We're going to do something practical today. And just could, I, can, I literally can remember being at school going, oh, I just I'm too tired I can't be bothered but actually it was really important for my learning and I think for us we're asking all of us to kind of step out of just arriving somewhere but actually participating in the life of the church so that is the emphasis the change of emphasis we want to push into intentionally uh, creating disciples So as our emphasis moves into intentionally pushing into discipleship, it means that we need to think about how we structure our church. And hubs being the heart of what we're doing um, this next year, being small communities where we do life together over food and we encourage each other in our discipleship and growth together. So one way to think about hubs is like they are mini churches. So we're looking for hubs to do all the key elements of what we think church is, which is gathering together, um, praying, uh, centering ourselves around God and worshipping him, uh, t having teaching from the Bible, supporting, encouraging one another, praying together. Um, and what's interesting is I think we often, we're so established in a way of doing church in the West, that we've done for a couple of hundred years, that we kind of think it is the way, but actually around the world today and throughout history and even in the bible church would have looked more like what we're talking about so we can see in acts 2 when it's talking about the early church acts 2 42 it says the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals including the lord's supper and to prayer 
So there you've got your teaching, you've got uh, the f hanging out over food, you've got the Lord's Supper, which was the worship act that they would do and to pray into one another. So we want to think about hubs, or a good way to think about hubs is like these mini churches where we are really active participants because they are smaller. But on top of that, we want to maintain a whole church identity. So we as a whole church are going to do the same kind of journey together. So we, this technology we've been using because of coronavirus, we will continue. So we'll create these little video teaching uh, that the hubs will watch. These are going to be short teachings about aspects of discipleship to equip us to live our everyday life uh, in the presence of God and for God. So uh, we're going to have a whole church identity, but we are going to kind of be uh, find our, our church connection in these in these small groups. Mm. And it's still very much a priority to meet all together corporately to worship and um, kind of be encouraged together and have that, that larger church uh, prior, uh, identity as we're talking about. So that's still really important. We want, we want both of the sides of the, of the um, discipleship story, really. Yeah, so we're not saying we're not, you know, we're not, uh, not going to meet together. We want to do it. That's part of our whole church identity. But we want to put our energy really into these hubs and small groups and, and make those feel like the heart of the church. And, and then our... Uh, whole church gatherings are really the icing on top of the cake. So this is um, this is something that God's been talking to about to us for a while um, about this importance of discipleship, about how it happens best in intentional communities. What's happened is while we've wanted to do this for a while, the COVID situation has just given us a shove into doing this. So we are setting out on this in 2021 as an as an experiment, as a trial. We're we're testing things out. We want to learn as we go along. So so we are going to see how this works. Nothing is set in stone, but we're hoping that you like us will just see this is an important element of actually what it means to really decide that we want to pursue God in in our everyday lives. So if hubs are going to be the heart of our church, it's going to affect the rhythm of what we do. So one way that I've been thinking about this is we've traditionally had a 4-2 rhythm. So four times a month we've met as the whole church on a Sunday morning. And then we've kind of encouraged people as kind of like a bonus, an extra, to be involved in a small group, which often met twice during a month. So we're flipping that now and we're, gonna, we're saying hubs will meet weekly because that's your weekly expression of your church connection. That is where you're going to do church with that group of people weekly. So that's four. And then as soon as we're able, we want to look at ways of connecting as a whole church family uh, twice a month. So we don't know quite what those will look like. And as I say, we're trying this. We don't know what regulations will allow. It might be that regulations allow us to gather all together, but only do certain things. So we're going to think about that. But it's really important to have a whole church connection to see everyone all together and catch up with those people you haven't seen for a while. But our emphasis, as we've said, is in those small communities because that's where we get to do life together and we uh, we get discipled and, and all those things. So yeah, uh, we, didn't, we definitely didn't want to add more things to people for people to do or attend. And uh, I'm hoping that hubs will feel a lot less busy because we're all eating anyway and you know, inviting people to kind of do life together is a lot less, um, well, it should feel more natural, I'm hoping, and easier. Yeah, so this idea it just fits into our normal life a bit better than, you know, going to uh, a service or an event, you know, we're hoping. And also, I know some of our experience of small groups before has been a little bit dry, and some sometimes we have this kind of dutiful engagement with it that, you know, I know I don't really want to go, but I know I should, and I, I'll probably appreciate it if I do. What we'd love to do is people feel more excited about seeing those people because there's this regular connection with them. It's done over food. There's more hanging around. So it's like, oh, I wonder how so-and-so got on this week. I wonder what's going on. Or I can't wait to tell somebody what, you know, we prayed about this last week and actually I've done something about it. So we want them to feel more life-giving, which is really important. And um, it says, so a verse for this is in Hebrews 10.25. It says, let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It's interesting that Bible verse is often used to tell people you should go to church every Sunday. You know, let us not neglect our meeting together. <coughs> but I think it's much more suited to what we're doing, meeting together, because it says encourage one another. 
And this is what we want. We want this kind of mutual encouragement rather than just a few people who stand at the front to encourage everyone who's sitting down. We want to do this real kind of mutual support, which we think is much more equipping people to be like Jesus. And we should say about for kids as well. So alongside what we're doing with our rhythm, we want to set up a rhythm for children's groups to meet fortnightly because we want to really encourage community among kids so that they get to make friends their own age who are on a similar process of discovering their own faith. We think that's really important for uh, them developing faith is to, ha is to have that peer community as well. So we want to make fun activities for those kids. But when it comes to hubs, we're thinking that families will join hubs together so that children will be part of hubs, but hubs won't necessarily gear things around entertaining kids because actually it's helpful for kids to experience stuff that isn't just aimed at them. So a good way to think about it is like an extended family get together. So, you know, you have an extended family get together or, you know, like those family friends come around and you all eat a meal together and there are grown ups asking the kids questions like, how do you like school? What's your favorite lesson? And kids think, oh, this is so boring. You know, why do I have to talk to these irritating adults? But actually it's really good for kids and studies show that if kids have relationships with grown-ups that are outside their immediate family it really helps with their resilience in life and it really helps with them finding faith when they see other christians outside their family and i think as well this is a chance for children to see what an active faith looks like in everyday life rather than just attending a spiritual place for an hour or two i think being in a community where they're, they're kind of seeing it modeled is is really important yeah so kids will engage differently and this is a decision or conversation about the parents will have and hubs together will have depending on kids but it might be that kids are there for the meal and there's a kind of like a way of saying thanks for the food that they get engaged with uh, and then some kids will want will are old enough to listen to the short talk and you know think about that some kids will be old enough to join in the discussion but at some point the kids will be said you know you can go off and play or you go into another room watch a movie or you're allowed your phone now all those sorts of things so and i just think that for kids to be involved in that rhythm to see the importance of a weekly connection with church is, is really important as they grow as well So as we think about moving forward and our vision for the church, we've been thinking about what the emphasis is going to be, how we're going to structure ourselves around that and the rhythm that our church will take on and we're going to try. And so now it comes down to kind of like how each of us is going to be involved with that. And I think that's down to us, you know, the responsibility of what we do and how much we engage. So we're just going to talk about different levels of engagement with what we do. And so one thing that I've always loved about our culture at Exeter Vineyard is we've been very relaxed. We've not been directive about, you know, you have to jump through these hoops to be part of us. We've been very kind of like just easy going, I guess. And I really love that. We want to maintain that culture while we are also able to be more active about uh, for following what God's calling us to do. And so we're just going to think about kind of three different ways you may feel that you fit into what we're doing. So I guess at the basic level, um, you could access our online services and material um, and you could attend the all together gatherings that we do. Um, but and that, that might be it, I suppose. That's the basic. Yeah. And so you're really welcome to just turn up to stuff. That's fine. And, and we're going to be doing online stuff. So if, if that's you find that helpful, that's fine. The next level up is maybe you, st you don't want to join a hub but you want to access our online staff, you're going to come to uh, activities we do for the whole church, but you can also be intentional with your relationships in the church, maybe especially with other people who don't want to do hubs. So just arrange regularly to meet up and have a coffee, check in with each other, ask about, you know, what's God doing in your life? What did you think about this? Are you learning anything? All those stuff, you can still be intentional about that as well. That's kind of second level. But what we really want to encourage people to do, because we think this is a God idea, is to engage yourselves in hubs. And this is an active choice that we want people to make. So not just to do it because, it, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, but to think, actually, I want to do this. So part of hubs is we want to decentralise what we're doing as church. So hubs have a sense of ownership over what they're doing. So we're talking about hubs, they're going to last for, 
for one year t for 2021 just as at the end of 2020 all our existing ones will have kind of closed and some of them are going to start again and everything but there's freedom to choose one you choose one for a year and you kind of commit to its success you think i want to help make this a success as well so that's turning up that's engaging that's contributing all those sorts of things so hubs of people who, who want to commit to it and also are open or desire God to work in their life, want to be discipled, uh, don't want to just, you know, hear a little bit and then kind of keep at arm's length, but think, actually, I want to, I want to give God permission to work in my life. Mm. And I think there's a Bible verse, um, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, that kind of sums up that intentionally choosing um, to kind of follow God. And it says, don't you realise that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. And the prize that, that we're going for is to discover the life God has for us, to live a Jesus-sized life in the midst of our own everyday lives we think this is so worth it i mean this is we think this is what it is to be human what god wants for us so we're we're excited about this so in terms of timeline we were going to try and get everything done in december so we can start right at the start of january but we just realized especially with all the changing coronavirus noise you know the regulations that's a lot of noise the preparation for a christmas that's not going to be the same as normal um, what we want to do is not rush things and, uh, and stuff get lost in the noise. So we think there's going to be eight or nine hubs starting in January. But what we're going to do is when we get to January, we will announce what those hubs are and then we'll talk about how you sign up for those, how you kind of become part of those. So that's going to happen in January. Um, so that is the schedule. And I do just want to say it has been a very strange season in our whole of our lives, but especially with church and just the fact that we have been able to adapt, you know, to, to these different ways of being part of church and connecting. I just want you to give yourselves a pat on the back because it hasn't been easy. It's not been the normal way of doing things. And I'm hoping that part of the shaking up is does engage us a bit more with God. And we are really excited about the possibilities God has for us in 2021 with coronavirus guidelines and beyond coronavirus guidelines of us intentionally pushing into allowing God to change our lives. And we think that's really exciting. So let's finish by praying. Father, we want to engage ourselves in your plan, your, your purposes. And so we pray that you will help each of us just uh, hear from you about how we move forward. When we think that following you is about intentional choices, you will help us see what choices we have before us and what are the right decisions to make. Be with us as we move into this new season, Lord, for, for wherever we are on that spectrum of, of, of new things, Lord, we pray that we would just get a sense, a confidence, a faith that you are, you are bigger than all of this and that you are good and that you love us and that this is your church and that we can trust you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.